Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We are at PlayStation Experience 2017. We are still broadcasting from Anaheim. We have a ton of content ahead, including The Forest. And I am joined by Michael and Guillaume from End Night Games. Hello, gentlemen. Welcome uh, to the program. Hi, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Justin's down there. He's, he's looking good. Uh, hi, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Hi, buddy. <laughs> uh, I'm excited about this particular segment, not only to have you guys on the show, but also because The Forest is a open world, very non-linear experience where players just survive. Uh, and that sounds like my jam. It sounds like the jam of a lot of people that like games that just let you go and don't put you on a leash. And I think you guys brought gameplay, uh, gameplay demo to show us. But as we yeah. get that queued up, tell me a little bit about what was the starting point, that like kernel that began The Forest? Or I should say an acorn that began The Forest. <laughs> An acorn. Uh, well, I guess it was like it was heavily inspired by Minecraft. Mm. Mm. Um, just that, obviously, player freedom, and also that sense of when you know it first goes dark in Minecraft, and then it suddenly becomes this totally different experience where it's oh like yeah, you know yeah. it's scary and all the zombies and things are coming out, and you got to fend them off. And I think we wanted to sort of take that idea, but do it in a really like with really realistic graphics, and you know, pour as much of the kind of you know, cool effects and things into it as we could, and then, you know, base the game around that kind of experience. Kind of put your own spin um, on that one particular element that you really enjoyed. Um, so, what what kind of makes it your own spin? What what uh, what kind of makes the game? What are people going to be attached to when they start playing this? What's going to make people want to come back and play more? Um, the name, the forest. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's. I mean, it's a survival horror game. So there's obviously the survival aspect, but then there's quite a elaborate building uh, component uh, okay, for everything. Okay. Like we have a very uh, simple to use, but uh, elaborate building system, and you can, mm. you know, chop down every single tree in the forest, and you know, create either like a little shack in the woods if you want, or a giant seaside. You can cover the whole land in <laughs> in wooden castles if you want. We've had players that have done that in the past. Cool. Looks like um, we've got some gameplay up here. Yeah, let's um, get it. So yeah, you can feel free to narrate what we're seeing. Explain yeah. to us kind of what we're seeing here. This is the very beginning of the game. Um, this is how you start. You start on a plane with your son next to you. So I'm going to get take a wild guess that this plane ride is not going to end very yeah. well. Well, things yeah go bad pretty quickly. But. I've got a flight in a couple days. Don't do this. <laughs> 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 it's like watching uh, Final Destination and then not wanting to travel anywhere. <sighs> yep. N it can never go well for a video game airplane ride. But it is time yeah. to get to survive. To oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's the start of the forest. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. That's how you start. And then we get a little more set up here. Yeah. That's where you get the beginning of the story. Uh, whoa. What? Because that's your son and... Mysterious, mysterious character. Yeah. What is going on, you guys? Yeah. <laughs> you pass out, wake up the next day. Are you serious? Come yeah. on, why would you do that to <laughs> me? This is such a hard way to start a game. Oh, man. Yeah, this well. is not is what I was <laughs> expecting. You're going to tug at the heartstrings right away. Uh, it's hungry. Uh, you don't know where you are. You don't know where your son's gone, obviously, but... You and told me this game was called The Forest. I thought we were going to, like, <laughs> go for a nice stroll. <laughs> There's, like, <laughs> mystical sprites <laughs> wafting about, and nope, it is a uh, brutal survival uh, horror. No, there are parts of the forest that can be quite tranquil, and, you know, when you're not being harassed by anybody <laughs> and you're just building, it's... There Does that time come? Yeah, yeah. There's so there are quiet moments. At the beginning of the game, is. Pretty quiet, like okay. um, unless you get really unlucky. Yeah, pretty it is. <laughs> You're in nice forest. It's yeah. you guys warm. have deceived me once. <laughs> 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 and I, I believe you guys have written that this game is largely like your childhood a adventures in a forest. If you threw in a bunch of crazy cannibals <laughs> and really <laughs> horrifying, life-threatening situations. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, Super. it's that that you know childhood ideal of just playing in a forest with your friends and you know running around with sticks and. Yeah, making up adventures, and that's kind of the you know once you get because once you get into multiplayer, like that's literally what you do. You just run around with your buddies and make a little shack, do cool stuff. You know, yeah. So. The animation on that hatchet swing that you keep doing there, it looks super intense. How long did you spend trying to get that animation <laughs> just right? Just that one. Uh, that was actually one of the first ones we put in. Like yeah. Because when we actually when we first put in the suitcases on the ground, and then uh, we. We realized you should probably be able to break them open, right? Uh, so we, we put in the downward axe chop, and mm. then it 
it kind of worked pretty well yeah. for the time. So. so here's a question I, I often ask developers that come on and have open world experiences that they've been designing. How do you as a team uh, manage that sort of spectrum between giving a player direction or helping them understand what they can do and not putting them on a leash and just having everything, you know, the gameplay itself? I mean, where do you find that balance and how do you guys design around that? Um, yeah, that was definitely an issue. Like, because we wanted to go like from the beginning, like kind of just full open, like no, you know, no missions, no NPCs telling you what to do, right. like very little guidance at all. Um, and we kind of, at one point, we had to put in that opening cutscene with, with your son being taken away to kind of give you some direction, right. like give you a, you know, give you an overarching goal. goal to sort of work towards if you want to. But then. But then, apart from that, then we just kind of set players loose in the world and let them go. But then we, like, really, we scatter the world with lots of little environmental storytelling things. Like, there's lots of clues to find, and the more you explore, you'll start to discover, you know, little hints about what's actually happening on this land and maybe where your son's gone. I'm pretty get and curious about the story, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. most people just start the game and start building stuff, like, straight away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I see we're, we're getting and into some building here right now. Yeah, so oh, Evan's just go. crafted himself a nice axe. Oh, nice. And uh, he's probably going to chop down a tree soon. There we go. Yeah, I was going to say, so far, this seems very peaceful besides the horrific uh, crash at the beginning of the demo. Yeah, well, it's good to have the, you know, the light contrast, the, yes, <laughs> the darkness that, com that comes there. Is where like the enemies are going to come just when you don't expect them and they're going to scare the crap out of you? Or are you going to kind of know what you're getting into when you go into those situations? Uh, it happens. It yeah. happens. Uh, you get yeah. surprised sometimes. Yeah, because uh, the enemies, or the creatures that live here just kind of roam the land uh. like, like they have their own sort of goals and paths that they take and they'll they'll come and investigate noises and if you like if you make a fire at night that'll tend to draw attention and so i couldn't choose to just live out a peaceful life in the forest here you can try like, <laughs> <if you laughs> like there are try there are remote parts of the map that are less inhabited and oh yeah if you don't chop down trees if you don't light fires. You, know, you could huddle in a cave somewhere. And <laughs> if you don't play the game, <laughs> then nobody will come after you. Yeah, yeah, but you could. You, you could you How could far that. does the building system go? Because you had mentioned that there's some light base building. Is that actually pretty advanced, or is it just like you know basic defenses that you can help hold yeah, down your go area goes at night? Pretty far. Um, from the start, you're just gonna make like a little shack right. and some fire to warm up, maybe some storage to keep items for later. Hmm. Um, and then, as time goes on, maybe you want to want more safety, build some traps, and if you want to be creative or just you know make something big, then we have all those bricks that are procedural, and you can make little foundation and then uh, add some walls on it, and then some floors, make multi-floor structures. Mm, nice. <coughs> you, can wow. you can cut holes in the floors, oh. put some stairs through it, so you can go all the way. It's like full-on base building going on here. Yeah, yeah, and and that UI. Let me talk about that UI for yeah. a second. Yeah. I'm such a UI junkie, so that looked so nice. But here we're we're getting a little bit of the. I think a shack is going to be going up right now. Our little cabin yeah, in the woods. Just putting up a few walls. That's the uh, procedural walls. This is actually exactly what it's like to build <laughs> in, <the life. laughs> in real in the yeah. wilderness. This is how you build. Yeah. yeah. I have a question. Um, is our is our hero ever going to get to take a bath? Because his arm's looking pretty rough there. <laughs> oh yeah, you know that's a really good question. You, you can go in water and wash. Oh okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, it'll Absolutely. wash off when you because you can actually get infected if you leave it too long. Oh really? You'll what? Get, yeah, you get some negative. I mean, I was making a gag, but I guess that that's actually <laughs> a mechanic in the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is. <laughs> And then tell us a little bit about there's some stealth components to the forest as well, correct? Yep. Yep. How does um, that mix in with the you know the survival and like when would that benefit you versus just going s sprinting into the you know forest <laughs> with an axe drawn? Uh, I mean, it really depends on your playstyle, I guess. Like you, you can, yeah, you can, um, like you, depending where you are in the forest, you get more of a, a, s a stealth bonus. Like if you're surrounded by trees and crouching and not moving, then you're generally pretty hid hidden from, from view. If you go right into a bush and just sit there, then you're basically completely hidden. You could mm. Enemies should walk straight past you. And you have a little indicator uh. on the screen, so you know uh, if you have a chance of being stealthy. Mm. Um. I love how organically you guys are conveying information here, um, rather yeah. than yeah. just like having an icon pop up when you gather something. You're physically carrying it, and you stack them, so I assume you can only yeah. carry a few at a time of any given object. Yeah, you can carry like two logs at a time, 
you know, it took like five logs to make that one piece of wall that was a door. Um, so, yeah, I mean, to make a little uh, cabin like that, it's it's not going to take you that long. Like yeah, and I like how five, you're, six trees and you're basically laying out a blueprint of the, your structure yeah, and yeah. you can build it over time, right? Yeah. yeah, you put it down and then you plonk it down in the world where you want and then and that's really good when you're playing with multi multi multiple people because oh. then you can all just come in and start like working on the same object because everyone sees each other's blueprints. So it's um You've got the nice little uh, kind of reminder in the bottom left corner showing you the things that you need to build what you've laid out to, it looks like. So, yeah, it looks like you guys have gone uh, really kind of uh, uh, user-friendly, uh, very kind of simple in terms of the way the crafting stuff works, about as simple as a complex crafting system like this can be. Yeah, definitely. We're always trying to just make it as simple and as visual as you can. Like, we really yeah, the least don't, like, have yeah, don't yeah. like having tutorials if we can avoid it. And you know. I, I like that he's still <laughs> carrying a lighter in broad daylight <laughs> just to... <laughs> <laughs> is that on the bottom right? Is that a, a hunger and thirst meter I see there? Uh, yeah, it's your um, it tracks your uh, health with the red bar, and you you have stamina with the blue one. Gotcha. Uh, every action you'll be draining a little bit of stamina, and um, you can take things to replenish that. And then there's yeah the stomach, which is your sure food level, and the l and the water next to that. Mm. Cool. And like, can you uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but did you, were you guys had an early access release on other platforms? Is that correct? Uh, yeah, it's been in PC early access. What you know, tell tell us a little bit about what kind of learnings that brings you, because the games that I track that you know do early access style releases, it seems like you can learn a lot from your early player base, and your game from the time that it starts to the time that it formally launches is often very different. Yeah, yeah, f it was. A really, um, yeah, learning experience for us because once we released the early access back in 2014, like, and then it, you know, it did quite well straight away, and we were like, because we were always sort of imagining we'd be done within, you know, six months to a year after that, and then, you know, we we started setting these timers where it's like, okay, we'll release a patch, and you know, every roughly every three weeks, and there's a timer in the game which tells you, you know, when the next oh, patch is coming, cool. so it kind of keeps us to a schedule and keeps the players, you know, from uh, getting too, um, you know, upset about when the next update would be coming. <laughs> but, then, but then that just You're being kind transparent. Of yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but then that, um, that sort of process, just like the game kept growing in popularity and, the peop and people just kept requesting all sorts of things they wanted to see. And we only had single player in the beginning and we th everyone was calling for multiplayer. So we decided to put in co-op, which was a big, Oh, after that's not just game. something that you can, m you know, wander over and drop into your <laughs> game, right? Oh, well, we, th we thought we could, but yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> How big is the team? Uh, ask? Well, I mean, there's under 10 people. We're under 10 people at the moment. There's <laughs> kind of, we're sort of the five full-time developers that have been working on it for the full four years. And then we've had quite a big uh, outsourcing team. Awesome. Um, I mean, Guillaume works from France, like, yeah. and... Me and uh, Ben and Anna, who are the owners of the company, are based in Vancouver. And then oh. our sound guys were in Australia, and we've had some contractors doing, you know, art and uh, things like that over the years. And it's are you guys it's ever able operation. to get the whole team together to like catch up on things, or just to grab a drink? Yeah, normally when we go to shows like this, yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> fly people down, and then uh, yep. um, yeah. The once a year or so. Or for a barbecue, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just get everybody together. Yeah, we've come across a nice little uh, gathering area here. Maybe we could all meet up in the game here and uh, uh, grill up a rabbit or something. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that. When you said co-op, uh, what what kind of co-op are we talking about? Is it local? Is it online? You know, what's, uh, wh how's it set up? Uh, it's online. Like, you, uh, you know, one person hosts the game and then other people join into his game. So it's just peer-to-peer. Um, and it's, you know, normally between four to eight people. Oh, wow. Is the sort of limit we have. Oh. That's still a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But, I mean, yeah, it's not supposed to be like a big kind of, you know, battle royale between different <coughs> camps yeah. or anything. It's more yeah, like, yeah. you know. Definitely not PvP, yeah. Yeah, it's not designed as PvP. I mean, you could play it that way if you wanted <laughs> to. But you can <laughs> grief um, people. Yeah, you c there's a lot yeah. of griefing that goes on. But, <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you know, the idea is you... You, you all crash on the same plane, so you'll have four people wake up instead oh of one. Oh, I see. And then you just... The game is exactly the same in multiplayer. Even in terms of the story, like, you can play through the story content with I four see. people versus one. And, yeah, it's just the fun it brings from having 
other people. Because it, it really changes the just the tone of the game. Whereas in single player, I mean, this is still the kind of idyllic part of it. But once it gets really scary, and people say they don't like playing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I imagine that in changes when you've got more yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, but then they say, you know, but I play it with my uh, you know husband in multiplayer, and we have a great time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got a uh, just a makeshift spear that we've built here out of a stick. And uh, I saw our player trying to uh, kill some rodents with it earlier. Go hunting. Get I this. Oh. For a and, and I just I, I think we missed that he had found a photograph or something, right, on the ground. Is that, that one of those environmental cool. story cues you mentioned? Oh, right. Yep. Well, we'll see it later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have we have rabbits to hunt. We we wandered past a uh, like a like a, a rope going down into a hole in the ground, mm. uh, which we sadly walked right past. I was kind of hoping they would go down there so we would see what happened. Yeah. Well, we might be able to go back there if, if we get enough time, because if we don't run into any enemies. Oh yeah, right here. Oh yeah. Well. So yeah, what's? I don't know, guys. This looks it's a little risky. We're doing it. All right, we're, we're doing going. It. We're going down. <laughs> There we go. Uh, okay, okay. Get that yeah, later. Yeah. The, the other part of the game is this vast network of caves that's like all like below the ground. And this is where we, we keep a lot of the really scary stuff, and also a lot of the higher, uh, level, like, the higher level items and cool things you might want to collect. But ah, so you've got to, but you've got to go through the yeah, high the risk, high reward. High, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and a lot of the story content you can find through caves and and creatures. <laughs> Uh. What what is <laughs> going on? Are those little worms? Uh. Yeah, this is probably not I re time rec pass. recommended to do this unless you're like more prepared. But uh. okay, uh. are you kidding me, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you guys? No, uh. no! Oh, get him! Hey. Yeah! Oh god! I didn't know I thought this was like a normal forest. This is not the a forest anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst kind of forest. Oh god. So wait, if that if you if you torch that thing and cook it, could you then eat it? Not that one. But uh, not that one. Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> not healthy. Other there's other types you can actually. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, more regular animals. Uh, so when we first saw this thing, I saw our uh, our hero open up the crafting menu. Does time pass while you're while you're crafting, or does that uh, mercifully pause the game for you so you have a moment to collect your thoughts? No, there's no mercy in this game, clearly. <laughs> in single player, yeah, it's going to pause the game. Oh yeah. In multiplayer, it's not possible, obviously, so it doesn't. And if you go into harder difficulty modes, then it doesn't pause either. So we get we really got ah. prepared into fights. Okay, uh, so that well didn't seem to be too happy of an ending for. Well, on uh, that on that happy yeah. note of well terrifying horrors <laughs> and being uh, hung upside down, it seems like. Yeah. Seems like the person. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't end there. Like uh, that's okay. No, certainly not. Um, before we let you guys go, do you have any parting words, or are you guys talking about when you would like to target a release date on PS4? Uh, yeah, no, we're uh, targeting uh, the second quarter of 2018. So we're coming yeah. up on it. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to be PS4, PS4 Pro. All right. And, uh, Excellent. Really excited to try and get it out there. <laughs> I'm excited to uh, be excited terrified. Yeah, totally <laughs> excited and scared. Um, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on the program. Oh. Good luck to finish a what it sounds like a long and terrifying journey <laughs> uh, in development. Uh, and everyone that is uh, joining us, thank you guys so much for watching. We still have a lot ahead, so please stay with us. We are still broadcasting from PlayStation Experience 2017 in Anaheim, California. Do not go anywhere. Stay with us.
レイステーション。